How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern. And guess what? It's a Sunday. You know, I got to tell you, the last, it's the last Sunday before WrestleMania, before our WrestleMania show, which we're going to be doing two hours next week. We're going to be live for two hours next week, doing a whole recap of everything happening, everything going on. Uh, so it's going to be a very hectic week, but that's why I'm enjoying this one. We're going to take our time. We're going to break down a bunch of stuff today. Joining me today, obviously, if you guys saw my Twitter, my co-host, my tag partner on We're Live Pal on the Wrestling Observer website, Garrett Gonzalez joining me to talk about everything happening in professional wrestling, and a lot is going on. Uh, we saw, obviously, the Triple H retirement story, which we're going to break down. He's uh, officially retired from in-ring action. Back to his daily duties, but I'm not sure how much day-to-day -day he's doing there also Vince is uh you know what I'm gonna save that for you Ooh, I was about to spoil something for you so we're gonna do that first thing first segment when we come back from break uh we're gonna be talking about the possible Vince McMahon scenario with Seth Rollins for his WrestleMania opponent now this is gonna get really interesting I'm telling you guys this is I'm, I'm excited for this I've heard some stuff so we'll break that down also uh NXT stand and deliver preview uh, everything else happened at Ring of Honor on Friday, which I'm psyched for. The first Tony Khan Ring of Honor show. You know, this is a fascinating period in professional wrestling. I, I mean, for me, you know, covering this for the last 10 years, uh, I'm thinking about, you know, the AEW announcement obviously was huge. The WWE Networks, you know, how that came about was huge. And obviously, you know, the C CM Punk leaving WWE was also another big story. But this is becoming a very fascinating period for pro wrestling. You know, we had a nice little boom in the 2010s, late 2010s. Things kind of settled down because of the pandemic, but it looks like things are picking up here. WrestleMania is shaping out to be a decent card on paper. I can't, you know, I can't really argue that it's not a great, you know, a good card on paper. But I want to get your opinions too in the chat room. If you're watching this live on any of our social media, on, on any of our streaming sites, you know what, let me know. Pop in the chat. Let me know what you're thinking. Because... I, I don't think I've covered this much in, in a short period of time, in a very long time. Very cool stuff happening. When we come back, I'm going to talk about this Vince McMahon scenario and the Seth Rollins uh, WrestleMania opponent pick. And of course, Garrett Gonzalez joining me, my tag partner on We're Live, pal. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarin here, Sunday edition of the show. Joining me, my tag partner on We're Live, pal, every Tuesday. Garrett Gonzalez, what's going on, Garrett? Hey man, what's up? This That's is my uh, timer. This is little... Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I, I, I thought Dave, Dave was timing uh, matches there for a second. <laughs> that, that's, um, you know, I I would not be shocked. That's how he does it. <laughs> I just hung out with him today, so I, I I saw got to see him, and I'm trying to get his Twitter verified. So I'm trying to help him with that. It can't be a hard thing, right? I, I mean, it's Dave Meltzer. <laughs> if he can't yeah, I mean, get verified, no one should. The website has his name on it. He's got a Wikipedia. He's got 250k or so followers. Like it should be easy, but I don't. Might know. as well. Might, I mean, he should be. Garrett does a great show. Uh, obviously, he does a bunch of shows here. He does Wrestling Observer Radio on Saturdays with Dave. Which I'm I'm gonna go into a topic that you guys were talking about because uh, this was interesting on Friday. A, a triple uh, ESPN released a interview that Triple H had done with Stephen A. Smith for ESPN Plus for Stephen A. Smith's uh, podcast on there. And a lot of information came out of here. A lot of this was kind of known or implied, but we kind of yes. got an answer from Hunter for the first time. And uh, essentially kind of, uh, I'm going to have you take the lead on this, but pretty much his career is over as far as in-ring goes. So when we first reported this, or when Dave first reported this, he, it's his report, it's not my report. Um, he had mentioned that the information wasn't really out about how serious this was. And that it was really serious. Then he's probably not wrestling again. Now, you like you said, it's we want to hear it out of uh, Triple H's Paul's mouth. And yeah, you know w what a bummer. But you know, uh, he has had such a long career in the ring. Like, there's no shortage of of really good Triple H matches out there. And you know, now it's about he's 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 older. He's got kids. He's got three kids. He mentioned it on the show with Stephen A about you know the the one time where he kind of broke up a little bit in, in his voice he mentioned his wife stephanie being the rock uh and i i'm i'm happy that you know he can come to this conclusion now 
you know, sometimes it takes something serious for these guys to come to this conclusion that maybe it's not the greatest thing to to continue to wrestle. But, you know, I think the thing that hopefully will come out of this is that, you know, the NXT brand, the black and gold brand that he really put his heart and soul and built um, to to the delight of wrestling fans, right? Like, you know, think of think of NXT and what it became. And and then, you know, they kind of took it a different direction with 2.0. But that was our U.S. wrestling brand where we were getting our wrestling matches yeah. fixed. Like WWE was the pomp and circumstance, but NXT was where we were getting our matches fixed. Now, AEW is here. You know, there are other uh, avenues to where, you know, we can, you know, it's e- easier to watch New Japan. But that was really our our fix, right? And so I hope that what happens is, is that, you know, we're remembering his career, but also we're remembering what he did to sort of raise the level of wrestling and actual professional wrestling matches in the U.S. with that NXT brand. Yeah. I, and, you know, you, you brought up something interesting and it kind of, you know, before we, we started the show with, with that two minute dialogue I gave everybody. Uh, you know, we saw a boom period for sure in the late 2000, uh, 2010s. For sh- I, I mean, we had, it was hot for Ring of Honor, New Japan, NXT, WWE was hot. Uh, and everybody kind of rode that. But you're absolutely right. For many that would never expose to a Ring of Honor, you know, product or a New Japan product or anything else, uh, NXT was the first time they got to kind of see... The wrestling that, you know, a hyper-focused pro wrestling fan would be interested in. Uh, and, you know, I, I, it's very, it's fascinating to me that they they switched, they did a total 180 back to what the original intention of NXT was. And a lot of this had to do with, you know, Hunter got to see what was happening, uh, the boom that was happening, and he kind of rode that. And now they kind of go, they went back to character development and more of that stuff. Do you think there's going to be a balance now? Do you think we're going to kind of, veer a little bit more towards the 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 triple h's nxc now that he's he's kind of back into this i don't think so like you know the the thing that was unfortunate about what happened with nxt losing that you know that war to aew on um on tuesday or wednesday nights was that somebody had to take the fall and unfortunately Triple H was the one who had to take the fall because, you know, Vince McMahon's not going to take the fall for it. And, you know, I've heard stories about other folks kind of behind the scenes pushing that, oh, you know, Triple H should take the fall here. Um, but I think what what I think now because of the way that Vince McMahon works is like he's like, OK, I allowed this to happen. And now we need to go my direction, which is 2.0, which is, you know, broad breaker and these these bigger wrestlers and you know the version of 2.0 which you know and and 2.0 can be okay it it can be halfway decent show there's a lot of stuff in there that that is almost always bad but it is getting better i just think vince was like you know i gave my reins to to this person this is not the kind of wrestling that i do they wanted to try it didn't work it lost we got egg on our face and now you know we're we're moving on so i don't think so only because i just think that from a competitive standpoint and just from a power and control standpoint um vince mcmahon uses these things sometimes to to prove points like if you go all the way back to ray mysterio uh winning the world championship and you know vince's whole thing was okay uh, uh, we'll let him win the world title but then we're going to have him lose every match just so I can show you guys that little guys shouldn't be the world champion. Like that kind of stuff. I, I sort of see this in in that same kind of like Vince McMahon, you know, I'll prove it to you guys that you are all wrong and I'm right. Yeah, I, you know, it, I think if NXT was an hour long, we would be having a very different conversation about the current product, right? They were an hour. They were an hour when they were a really strong product. They went to two hours. And then they started pulling everybody. It got a, it became weaker, and now they they are a developmental product that has a two hour show on USA on national TV. You know, this is when we talk about watched hours versus practical hours of things that make sense, and that they're 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 a great example for a one hour product. I think they could do a fantastic one hour show weekly, but they need to sell ads and they need to make money for for what it is, and they have a contract. So I kind of get it. Do you are you at all excited about next week's stand and deliver show? Because I'm here, I'm seeing nothing about this. 
I it is not my favorite build for a show. It's not my favorite matchups. I didn't want like my personal taste of wrestling. Like I like I like getting behind that like kick butt baby face like Braun. Yeah. And then he loses the title. And then I'm just like, uh, okay. So we're, this whole thing is created for him to win it again in front of fans. Like, I don't know. I, I, I didn't, I don't like a lot of the matchups on this show. I think there'll be some good matches. Uh, the, the, the real problem with this show, because the in ring stuff is getting better. Like the matches are getting better. The, as these younger wrestlers have more and more matches, what's not getting better, the production, which is absolutely terrible with all the shakiness of the cameras and they're missing spots the other thing that is really terrible is the skits mm. uh, you i, I, oh, I mean, I'm sure everybody's making out i'm sure there have been times in pro wrestling where backstage skits were worse i remember when tna first came out some of their backstage skits were like really embarrassing but that we're getting to that level with some of this stuff right like when you see indie um and and dexter making out and the whole story is like oh you know it's all about one-upping you know her friend persia and and who loves their boyfriend more like now we're getting back to you know divas style era stuff i thought we were kind of advanced beyond that and they're kind of going back to that stuff and i'm just like let, let's just move on let, let's let's do more serious stuff where i don't have to worry about you know, someone walking in when I'm watching this thing and then me being really embarrassed on what's on television. That's happened on NXT a fair amount lately. Yeah, and, and but here's the thing about NXT, right? Their ratings are not falling off a cliff, right? They're not bad. So at the end of the day, the networks are satisfied and so is, you know, WWE's going to be satisfied too. Going to go to this break. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian, see you in a few seconds. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Garrett Gonzalez, tag team partner on the show. Garrett, are you uh, are you excited for WrestleMania? Excited is... <laughs> I don't know if excited is the word, just because it's a giant ask, you know, to, to watch two days. It's a giant ask. You gotta, you gotta commit like 10 hours in, over the week. It is. <laughs> that, that's the scary part. Now, if, if you're asked... If the question is, are there things that I... I'm looking forward to absolutely. Uh, there's also things that I'm not looking forward to, but that's kind of been the theme of WrestleMania, you know, over the last 10, 15 years. But I, I, I think the build has been fairly well put together. So I, you know, I had this conversation with Dave on Friday night about, you know, has the build enhanced your mentality? And you and I had the same conversation on We're Live, pal. Has the build to these matches made made you look forward to it more? than before when it was announced and i would say for the most part yeah for most of the matches yeah i think they've done a decent job i mean the execution is what matters at the end on paper and and, and getting to the point of wrestlemania i think it's it's uh they'll they're doing an okay job absolutely but you know there's a lot of stuff in the air right now uh and, and one of the main stories here and i think a lot of people are interested in this is who seth rollins opponent is going to be and the speculation is this is Cody, right? We, we saw the right. report that Cody had apparently signed his contract weeks ago. Uh, there was a little issue at one point, And then uh, I, I was told by WWE directly that there is no issue. And uh, that mm -hmm. story wasn't accurate. But, you know, you never know how these things go. Uh, of course, they're going to try to tell you that this is working out. It's not. It hasn't <laughs> fallen apart. But it looks like it's happening. And sometime on Friday... Uh, I was told to hold off on this till Monday, but I'm going to talk about it because Seth Rollins put out a tweet. Uh, sometime on Friday, I was shown a image of okay. something. Okay, of, of um, it wasn't Seth's opponent. It was Vince McMahon will be making the decision. Something along <laughs> those lines. I forgot what the copy was on that thing. But Vince is going to decide who his opponent is. So whether that happens on Raw. Or that actually happens uh, at the show itself, I don't know. But something is happening on uh, on on Monday, tomorrow night. Now Seth has threatened to hijack Raw. That this was from last week after he lost his match to AJ Styles. So there's no more paths for him to go to WrestleMania. But maybe there's a Rhodes. <laughs> uh, I like that. I, I'm. 
apparently i don't know did you see the tweet that seth put out that he has to be, meet vince in his office at 9 a.m tomorrow yes. so i don't know how that's gonna go i don't know the storyline here but this is leading to vince mcmahon selecting seth's opponent and man you know what what a, i mean you want to talk about heat what a great way you know to kind of mix things up a little bit more by vince hand selecting cody to be Seth's opponent. I hope they do. Like, remember when Bischoff came out and everybody was shocked that Bischoff yes. was in WWE as the general manager and Vince and him gave that big hug? They should do the same exact thing. Well, so does this align Cody with Vince, do you think? Is, is I that? No. I, I mean, I don't know if that's the way they should go or maybe, you know, uh, he becomes an antagonist to, uh, to, to Cody. Uh, you could do a lot here, but what do you make of it? I mean, this is, t to begin with, this is so bizarre, right? This is all, I mean, we could pretend this is this is just wrestling and everybody, you know, at the end of the day, never say never in wrestling, and it's 100% true. This is a great example of it. Uh, I, I mean, at, at this point, if if I'm not, I'm not convinced CM Punk would never go back to WWE, you know? I mean, the odds are he will never go to WWE, but I'm just saying, you know, wrestling has done crazy things, but Cody going is one of the more bizarre never say never scenarios that we've seen in this modern era of pro wrestling because this is a guy that was there he left because of lack of creative lack of anything everybody knows he's a great uh professional wrestler he he's you know he's everything wwe wanted just didn't work out for him there leaves goes on the indies tears it up creates a name for himself changes his style to adapt to, to this new modern wrestling start you know becomes one of the found you know founders and i'm using hand quotes here but founder i don't know what how how you know deep he was in the in the weeds with tony khan but he was an evp of the company an executive vice president of the company that even a couple months ago had said he would he could never see himself going there mm -hmm. and what do we see contract runs out stalled out deal with tony drops the title and he's gone and not only is he gone, he signs with WWE, uh, apparently, right? And this is what this is leading to. This is a fascinating story for anybody that likes to to the inside stuff for, for wrestling, right? This, to us, is really interesting. Now, Garrett, do you think the people in that building, you know, uh, the casual fan that watches Raw is going to have the same type of commitment to or, or interest in the story as we do? Uh, probably not, but like you like you said about uh, the WrestleMania build, it's it's you know they're. I was saying the the build is great, and you're saying yeah, the build can be great, but it's really about overall how how it's produced and, and the outcomes. I think the same thing with this Cody angle. There there was uh you know, and it's died right. The the level of anticipation has died. I think a little bit like because now now we know we don't have to guess it's either monday or saturday sunday right like the, the those yeah. are the only dates left for him to show up so there's no real surprise anymore i think so our friend uh friend of the wrestling observer website in and community john muse had said what if cody gets introduced as a wwe evp which aligns him with vince right it, it absolutely aligns him with vince and he comes in as a heel and, you know, he, he's pushed to the top, you know, right away. I would love to see something like that. What I would hate to see is if he comes in as like a heel authority figure. I think that is a tired and um, uncreative way to, to bring him in. But I think we both agree that he needs to come in as a top star because ultimately that's what the fans will see him. How the fans will see him is how they book him. Yeah. If he comes in right away and he's near the top and he's with Roman and Brock, uh, I think that will be where the current fans and the and the Raw fans and the current WWE casual fans or whatever, uh, I think that's when he'll be made is is by that. Uh, before then, just on the sake of you know whether or not AEW, what happens with that, I think there's still some buzz, but ultimately it's going to be how they book him. Yeah, I, I think 100%. Uh, uh, you know, and they have a good opportunity here to do something big. And not only is this is this interesting for TV stuff, right? But this is also a business move for WWE to kind of say, 
Hey guys, look, don't worry about it. Listen, this whole thing that we we don't take care of talent and we'll, you know, you're not one of us. You're 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 from someplace else and we're going to be ah, that's all that's all nonsense. Look how great we're doing with Cody. That's yes. going to be their opportunity to do that. And yes, you know, there's a number of guys, you know, that are unhappy at AEW or or have been unhappy at AEW. There are a number of guys that may not resign. There there's a lot of what ifs here that are happening and this is WWE's, you know, uh measure in the war to kind of combat that and say listen don't worry about that look at what we're going to do with cody if you're a big enough star we will keep you a big star we want to benefit from this all the research and development AEW is doing in creating this character we're going we want to we want to benefit off of it so I, I think this is really interesting now the way this plays out is really going to be the story here so tomorrow seth has a meeting at w you know with, with vince they we, he posted that text message they will maybe play, they'll play into this somehow on TV where Vince is now picking Seth's opponent. Vince is picking the opponent. Let, let, let's just, you know, we, we can speculate everything else, but the nitty gritty is Vince is going to play a part in this in picking Seth's opponent. Maybe it's a swerve. Maybe he picks someone ridiculous and then it just doesn't pan out of WrestleMania. And here we go. Here comes Cody. There's so many different things that we could do here. Uh, I'm... I'm way more leaning towards Cody is, is definitely there from everything I've been told. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be shocked if it's not, you know, we don't end up with Cody on, on you know, either, either on Sunday. Imagine they don't do it on, on WrestleMania. Maybe they do it the Monday. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> oh they just, they gosh. just drag this out a little bit longer. Oh, please don't. <laughs> you know, one thing that you and I had, had talked about is, you know, why would Cody want to go to WWE? Let's say Cody's end game is not pro wrestling. Let's say Cody's end game is TV or movies. WWE is the better launching pad for that than yeah. anything else that that he could do, right? So I'm not saying that's what it is, but I know there's interest there. I think he's doing a, a TV pilot or something like that, like very soon, if not already. And if that is his, you know, if he if you look at John Cena and you look at uh, the Rock, and you look at Dave Batista, and even Austin for a small bit of it, even though Austin didn't really like it. Like, there is a jumping off part from being a WWE superstar to Hollywood. Like, there's a there's a now line, and I'm sure with Hollywood, they're like, oh, Rock has worked. Yeah. Cena has worked. Batista has worked. We are open to this now. And so if, Co if that is Cody's uh, future, if that's what he wants to do, that makes a lot of sense to me that he would utilize well, WWE. It? I mean, that was his when he left WWE, I, I, I believe he had said in an interview initially, he's like, yeah, I'm going to wrestle every now and then. Like, I'm not stopping it. But my main thing is going to be acting. I'm not I'm not I'm not leaving WWE to become like a he be a full time wrestler, which I it, think he, he to did that. that. I think he did that stuff before he even went to OVW. I think there, there was like a period of time where after he was done with high school and, and college and stuff. Where he was like, okay, I'm gonna take these acting classes, I'm gonna go to these improv things, and then yeah. this was even before wrestling. So very interesting stuff. But we'll pick this up after the break. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Sports byline. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian, Sunday edition. Garrett Gonzalez joining me, my co-host today on the show. The last show before WrestleMania. Next week is gonna be a very busy couple days for me. Uh, we're gonna be live here next Saturday. Preview in WrestleMania Night 2. Recapping Night 1. It's going to be interesting. I'm trying to think about all the things I'm going to talk about next week. You know, we should pre-record. Garrett, you know what you, we should do? <laughs> Let's pre-record the show, right? And air it as if, like, as if per people, like, who we think, like, what happened, like, what yeah. the match's results were. And let's just air it. It's an April Fool's weekend anyway. <laughs> Let's yeah. just put it out there. Wow. Brock. Beat like, Roman. Brock beat Roman in 30 seconds. Paul Heyman <laughs> cashed in the money in the bank that he had he had found someplace in a, in the garbage. We're doing Russo bo booking now. He found it in the garbage. He became the money in the bank, and and he cashes in on uh, Brock Lesnar because wins the world title. Uh, this, you know what? D don't I should not put it out there in the universe. I will not put that out there in the universe. Talking about SmackDown, uh, some notes and next week's go home show. Uh, Xavier Woods returned. Ricochet was beaten beaten twice to set up a title match and Brock laid out security once again. Brock is a total lunatic now. I like this version of Brock. I don't want it yeah. to ever go back. Like, I like this bizarro Brock Lesnar that we're getting. Very cool with it. Next week, SmackDown, 
Uh, next week, this is going to be... Th so they're doing this, and then they're going right into the Hall of Fame, right? So that crowd yep. is going to be there for like 40 hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Andre the Giant, Battle Royal. You got Finn Balor, Paula Cruz, Commander Aziz, Madcap Moss, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, Drew Gulak, Reggie, the Viking Raiders, Mansoor, Shanky, Artru, Jinder Mahal, Bobby Roode, and Damian Priest. So is this like their WrestleMania just to get everybody on the card? Is this one of those that they're doing? Yeah, so you're telling me that Finn and Priest are not going to be on <laughs> WrestleMania? Andre the that's, Giant, Battle Royal. That's weird. Yeah. Intercontinental Championship match. Ricochet defends against Angel and Umberto. Uh, this means, this is fascinating, right? This means there are no secondary titles being defended at WrestleMania this year. Yeah. Unless they do something on a pre-show, uh, yeah. right? No, you're right. You're right. Unless they change this up and it's like a last minute thing that they're doing. Very interesting. I don't know, man. You know, I, I, I look at the cards for the two nights mm -hmm. and I don't look at him say, oh, this, this is going to suck. Right? Like you don't, you have Austin night one with, with Kevin Owens, depending on what they do. Right? Again, everything on paper looks okay. You also have a great match, which we know it's going to be great. Uh, Edge and AJ Styles, you have the world title, you know, the unification match or, or unified match or whatever they're calling it. Undisputed match? What are they calling that title? If you win it, you're not the unified. They are you calling the it, uh, it only so on uh, Wikipedia, it says winner takes all match to unify okay. the WWE Championship and WWE Universal Championship. Okay. So, you know, not bad. There's some cool stuff happening. There's a possibility that uh, Johnny Knoxville and, and Sami Zayn is not great, but hopefully they would keep that short if it's not I don't want to see that match. I'm not a big I don't Jackass wanna... fan, are you? Do you no, like the... me, I, I, me I didn't neither. Do it for me. I get it. I get well, why people like it. I just It's not my thing. It's good for Sami because it that means he's got a match on this show. But I, it's one of those things where it's like they're going to try and top something with Johnny Knoxville. And I don't know if... You know, I don't know if I, I don't know if that's something that I want to see on my on WrestleMania, but it it, it is what it is. Hopefully, just keep it short. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm so I'm doing something different. Normally, I do watch alongs for these things, but I after the last one, I can't do these anymore. So I think I'm just pointing the camera in my living room, and you guys could hang out and watch <laughs> with me. I'm not gonna sit here and do do like. You know, because I'm, I'm going to do, obviously, Observer tomorrow uh, on, right. on that Sunday. And then I'm going right. to have to, you know, talk for the next six hours. Yes. After talking for two. So I can't do an yes. eight hour shift here. I, I'm, I, I'm choosing no. not to. Plus, like, you won't you won't be able to enjoy the show if it's a good show. It'll be harder. Yeah. And then you're going to have to rewatch some of the stuff in case, you know, you got to talk about it again. It's not it's not the best thing. You know what I want to talk to you about? And we didn't get a chance to do this because uh, we'll probably do this on Tuesday again. But Dynamite. I, what did you think of Dynamite? Because it was a, I, I don't, I'm not going to say this in a, I'm not meaning this in a negative way whatsoever. Yeah. It was a great show where not much happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we got great stuff, but it wasn't like this, oh my gosh, like blockbuster show, but it was a really good, I, like I enjoyed everything on that show. Um, and, and it just, I felt that it was like a really, if they could do these for these in-between shows, like they could continue having these solid shows like this uh, where it's not you're not you know furthering much uh, i'm okay with this like if they did this every week this is great uh i thought that opener was great with cm punk and dax hardwood very different match than the rest of the card what did you think of that i, I really liked that match i thought it was the best match of the night yeah. i think i think the problem what we're seeing is because the ratings are being watched so closely Dynamite doesn't really breathe at all, right? It goes from something crazy happening, quick interview, no commercial. Like there's almost no commercials because everything is picture in picture. So you never really get a chance to like sit back and go, ah, everything is just boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. And to, to some extent, it's it's really good because the show is entertaining. It's a very quick two hours. But to what you're saying, I think could be even when they do really important stuff it's the the entire show is almost like a game of top this so some of the stuff there's nothing really subtle about the show so some of that stuff that is really good the next thing is even bigger so like that yeah. means a little bit less the thing that you just watched like you know we, we got to see the mjf promo 
which was really good. We got to see Danielson and Moxley, which was really good. You got to see Jeff Hardy jump off of high things, which Dude, was, that was great. really cool. Yeah. But uh, like if you had two of those things, those two things probably mean a little bit more. But I get it because Dynamite, the ratings are so important that they there's probably a worry that if we don't have four or five of those things, it's going to give a reason for the the fans to kind of change the channel. I so gotta, they uh, had they're packing these shows. I got a good buddy that that works on uh or or yeah works on a, on a very well known NBC TV show. Okay, like a great NBC TV show. And you're talking you're not talking about Young Rock, are you? No, no, no. I'm not talking about I'm a Young kidding. Rock. <laughs> uh, I, I so he was telling me he's like, listen, you know what's the difference between AEW and what like let's say WWE did or does? He goes, all the stories are very much self contained. And they won't tone it down depending on what the story prior was. They're all like self-contained stories. Like you had CM Punk and Dax Hardwood in this great match. And what do they go right into? The Hardys, Darby Allen and Sting that had that crazy, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, yeah. that had that the, the jumping off of ladders. Okay, cool. Where's the bring me down, right? Where's the bring me down here? Uh, I, I forgot the order of these. Uh, maybe not right here, but... Then you get Brian Danielson and John Moxley in this great squash match with Varsity Blondes, right? They do, and then they talk about you know the Black Bull Combat Club and all all that. Then you go to MJF and Wardlow, which is at like a, going hundred miles an hour. Adam Cole and Jay Lethal was a fantastic match, and then you got the Jericho match at the end that was really good, and it was a great show for Daniel Garcia. Everything is very self contained, and he and he he was saying that in a positive. He's like, you know, I give I give Tony Khan or whoever's writing this or booking this a lot of credit because it is very difficult to keep that going. Yeah. Yeah. No, I very agree. Cool I agree. But that there is the you know, there could be a negative to, to doing of it course. that way too. Like I said, like you said, you know, where's the breathe segment? Now, maybe you know, may, maybe we do get a breathe segment and then you know everyone changes the channel and then it's like, oh, you know, how do we how do we make sure that people don't change the channel? So I get it, yeah. I understand it. I understand it from the ratings perspective. I understand, like, you know, if you watch the, you know, we, we see the segment by segment, but I'm sure Tony has the minute by minute stuff. Yeah. So he knows, you know, exactly when people are changing the channel. So, the, you know, I'm, all, this this entire show is being being put together with the analytics and stuff in mind. And, you know, Harrington, I'm sure, knows you know, everything that we would want to that we would want to know to dig further. But yeah, it, yeah it, I, I think the show um to me, like for my personal tastes, I don't mind a, a, a segment of not a whole lot going on, but I understand why they do it. Yeah, like the Thunder Rosa stuff was eh, you know, OK, it was whatever. Just, it, was, it was just bad. No though. knock at her. I think she's fantastic. I think she had, you know, a solid couple of weeks coming up, winning the title. I thought it was great. You know, sometimes that happens. It's fine. I, I And this is a great argument to, you know, if if they were three hours with this show. How would you feel then if they incorporated dynamite into this show? How would we how would we be how would we be viewing this? And I think that's something to consider, right? Because WWE, the last couple of Mondays have been pretty decent. I'm telling you, I've watched it uh, and I'm I'm not one I have not watched it live in a very, very long time. Garen and I talk about it. I watch the abridged version or I, you know, I watch on DVR and I'll skip that's through a I lot of stuff. It, yeah. Uh, and you know, I've watched it live the last couple of weeks and it's not bad. My biggest complaint is the third hour is really diluting my attention to the product because it's too slow, too much backstage, too much, uh, too many breaks, too many backstage, too many, uh, you know, uh, video packages. But I get it. They got to fill three hours. You can't have three Wait, hours of action like that. You know, if you think of a, of a sport, right? Think of an NFL game. I, I haven't seen segment by segment ratings for NFL games, but for close football games, I imagine the 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 end of the game is probably the highest rated segment because hmm. more people that's the best part for for folks to to watch. That's raw cannot duplicate real sports like that. And so thus the third hour is often you know we're just tired yeah. instead of oh we're fired up to see the end the climax of the show. That that and it's been like that for a long time. You know this is this is actually a great 
question or criticism reggie in our chat room why is it and and i and i get this question why is it that dynamite has to be five stars every ap episode for maximum <laughs> approval but wwe can have a a you know mid-level show and it's considered satis satisfactory i think it's the expectation going in yes i yes. think people have a very high expectation of AEW because it's a new product and you're watching it with judging eyeballs uh you're a not aew has to be better than wwe to even yeah. have a seat at the table if yeah. they're not if they're not better then you have impact which is it, it's it's fine it, it, it's around but it had an opportunity to to be dynamite before dynamite right and, and it over time couldn't couldn't do it so uh yes another another bizarre segment i i totally blocked this out the sammy and uh ty conti oh, stuff that was terrible. very cringy they uh, gotta go heal they, they, they have to go they heal have after to that segment you know what yeah. They are a good heel act. I think they could be a really good heel act. I just, I, I was like, why? Well, like, <laughs> whatever. I get it. Like, someone thought, of, listen, you're going to have these misses. It's yeah. fine. You're going to yeah. have it. it, it but you, again, the, they're, we, they're experimenting. Uh, you know, I think stuff like that that we see where we're like, ah, oh, this feels a little weird. It's it's an experiment uh, for them to see if if they can make something, you know, that, that they don't generally do work. And to me, that stuff is is the the channel changing stuff, and it's unfortunate because Sammy, I love Sammy, and I think he's a pretty hot character. Putting him with his current girlfriend isn't the best thing for it's me heat. as a Sammy <laughs> fan, yeah, um, because she's not a very likable promo. And so maybe they are just going heel. Maybe that's the idea. Let's let's just go heel. Stupid with handsome Sammy and his and, and his <laughs> very good looking girlfriend. I don't want to see that. All right, I don't want to see you guys. No, listen, man, I, I hope nothing but the best for those guys. You know, and this oh, yeah. brings up another 100%. thing, right? And we talk about this all the time. The way I watch pro wrestling, I have no bias. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. We all do, right? We all like what we like. But what I like is professional wrestling. And for me, AEW has been doing more hits than misses. And at times, WWE does that for me also. It, you could like both, man. You yeah. could like yeah. anything you want. You could dislike whatever you want. But don't poo-poo on my parade. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this sports byline. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show. Andrew Zarian here. Garrett Gonzalez, everybody. My co-host. Wrestling Observer's own Garrett Gonzalez. Good friend Fun. of Dave Meltzer's. Personal friend of Dave Meltzer's. He was just there today. <laughs> Yeah, doing no, a pose off. You go there, and Dave just starts, you know, doing like biceps, and you know, <laughs> just one of these, one of well, these. Well, he he told me that he's he hasn't been to the gym in months, so I'm a little worried for him. He, no, he remember he, he he used to talk to the weights. Remember, he, <laughs> he would he, talk to the weights. Yeah, he would get very frustrated <laughs> and talk to the weights. So, Garrett, yeah. what have you been up to? All right, so I uh, just I just wanted to say real quick. Obviously, we've been talking about Mania Week. Uh, Fight Game Media is my group, my brand, my crew, and we're doing a bunch of different podcasts for WrestleMania week. We're covering the whole thing from soup to nuts, lots of lots of stuff going on. Uh, so if you want to go at Fight Game Media, you can see our Twitter and the whole schedule is actually in the cover photo of the Twitter. But I wanted to make mention and I, and I sent you guys a photo. Dave and I hadn't done a podcast in person since the pandemic started and that's how we done all of our podcasts was in person pandemic happens we have to figure out how to do it you know which we did but you know you think go from doing it in person so today was the first day and here's the proof that this is, is the famous office so that's how you guys know it's legit uh he and i did a podcast today in person it's going to be on our patreon and it's kind of kicks off WrestleMania week for Fight Game Media. So it's a Q&A, a WrestleMania Q&A with Dave. We went about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And uh, if you if you want to go patreon.com front slash Fight Game Media to, ch to check it out. But yeah, so that was the first time. I love it, was, it. it was a blast. Love it. Guys, we'll be back next week. WrestleMania edition of Wrestling Observer Live. I may have a treat for you guys. It may be two hours. Let's see. I think it's going to be two hours. You know what? We're making it two hours next week. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next time. Take care.